Well, so we've seen the be the first day of this story that happens as people go to question John the baptizer. We've seen the second day where John makes a declaration about who this person is. And now we return once again to the scene around John the baptizer in verse 35 for again the next day. So now day three, John is standing with two of his disciples and he looked at Jesus and said, behold the Lamb of God. So he's repeating what he saw. He's repeating the message of the last time. And two disciples, after hearing him yesterday, now follow Jesus. And so we have these first two followers of Jesus who are seeking where he's going. It's showing that it's a journey. Jesus turns around, sees him, says, what do you seek? And he said, Rabbi, where are you staying? Now, that's an interesting question, because the word stay means to abide, to remain, which is a theme that gets picked up later in the gospel. It says, well, follow me and I'll show you. Come, come after me and I'll show you. We'll see. So this invitation is to find out where Jesus is staying. And that can be taken literally that night or more um allegorically, metaphorically speaking, of he's abstaining in the Father. And so that's an important part. And so we have the first two. And the first one we know is named Andrew. So Andrew is the first disciple that is named, one of the followers of John the Baptizer, but the other one doesn't get named. So he goes and he finds his brother, Simon, and he brings his brother to Jesus. And he tells him that we have found the Messiah. And so we have him bringing him. And so then uh, Simon comes. He is renamed Cephas, the Aramaic word, which is the Greek Peter, by which he's best known. And then these one, two, three followers and Jesus proceed on. It's the next day, again, in verse 43, day four. And he wants to go into Galilee, and he found Philip. Now, to get from Jerusalem to Galilee is more than a day. And so on the next day is showing some um, discussion of meaning that we'll see when we get into chapter 2. But he finds Philip. So now there are four followers because Jesus says, follow me. Once again, the following happens. So what does Philip go? He goes to find a friend, Nathaniel, and says, hey, we have found him. We have found him. We have found him. And he invites Nathaniel to come. And so there is this sense. And so we, with Nathaniel's coming, there are now five disciples who are with Jesus and following Jesus. So here is the pattern for discipleship in the Gospel of John. Is one hears a testimony from someone, the first two heard from John the baptizer, Simon heard from his brother, Andrew. Philip is simply summoned, but Nathaniel hears the witness of Philip, that we have found him. And then those who are found bring someone else. Those who are invited bring someone else. And that becomes this idea. And the question is, where is Jesus staying? Now, with Nathaniel, we have the longest conversation that is happening. And Jesus and Nathaniel are talked about quite frequently. But um, Jesus says, Nathaniel is a true Israelite. And Nathaniel says, how, how, how is that? Why are you identifying me? How do you know me? And so this idea of the true Israelite is the one who is like Jacob, but has no deceit, because Jacob's term means deceiver, but Israel means one who wrestled and struggled with God. So he's a play on this idea of the, the history of the people to be this true Israelite. And Nathaniel says, how do you know that? Jesus says, I saw you sitting on the fig tree. And all of a sudden now Nathaniel has something to say 
truly you are, right? You are the Son of God and King of Israel. That's what has to happen. And that introduces then the confessions that are made here. All right. So we have Jesus as the Lamb of God as a proclamation by John the Baptist. But the confession is first, Jesus is the rabbi. The two followers of John the Baptizer call him rabbi, which means teacher. Rabbi is an Aramaic name, word. And so it's translated into the Greek teacher so that the audience of John would know what that Aramaic name means. And so they call him a rabbi or teacher. But after simply being with him a short time, Andrew says he is the Messiah, a Aramaic word, which now is translated into Greek, meaning the Christ. So if people are arguing over Messiah and Christ, it's simply a matter of two different languages. That's all it is. <clears throat> so we have a confession by Andrew of um, Jesus is this Messiah. Then Philip says that he is the one about whom Moses wrote and the prophets wrote. So he is the fulfillment of scripture. He may even be the prophet like Moses that is talked about. And then Nathaniel says he is the son of God and the king of Israel. He notes this. You can see a, a increasing affirmation of Jesus from being simply rabbi teacher to actually being now the Messiah, the messianic figure, to being the one about the scriptures or writing, to being the son of God and even the king of Israel, the one who has come to redeem the people. So there are expectations about who he is. And yet Jesus says, mm, <laughs> you're going to see even more than this. In fact, you're going to see the heavens opened and the angels descending and ascending on the Son of God. So there is this greater thing than even what you understand and interpret. And so the thing that happens in the first chapter of John, as we move through John the Baptist and we go through the disciples, is that we begin to see that a foundation is laid for who Jesus is, identifying him in various ways, making certain that the people know as they begin to hit the stories of the identity of Jesus as told by John, as told by Andrew, as told by Philip, as told by Nathaniel. And these confessions become very important because it is a testimony. It is a witness that is given. It is this trial. And here's who you're supposed to see Jesus to be. And that then leads us to the conclusion of chapter one.